This is what it's all about. Moments like this. The Canadian Premier League regular season champions hail from Calgary, Alberta. It's Cavalry FC. Never mind that sign. That doesn't matter. Incredible scenes in Calgary. Special moments to celebrate for a special group of individuals. Yeah, I got mixed emotions here, Wheels and KJ. I'm, I'm happy for a team who deserves it. I'm absolutely envious because that, that scene <laughs> of just picking it up, how sexy that shield looks as well, KJ. But that is what you work for, 28 games in a season. It could go to no better team than Calvi FC. He's been waiting for this. Tommy Wielden Jr. about to go wheels up. <laughs> genuine tears in the eyes of the likes of Tommy Wilden Jr., Marco Carducci, the others that have stuck around, Charlie Traff and many others, Dan Klomp, and they've learned out of, they've learned from losing how to win. And what he did with by going out and getting Jesse Daly and getting Shamit Shom, players like that to come in. Willie Akio brings the pace, but Camden is that you've got technicians, you've got players who possess the ball, and yet you allow that system to be interchangeable where you can bring Showman from the right and bring him into midfield and control games more. And previously, they struggled to control games. They would push up and push, and they'd have that moment, they'd have the ability to score a goal, and then other teams would come back at them. But the element of controlling games, when they go up, you, you just they, they rarely concede goals. They have reinvented themselves the way that they play in terms of personnel. Like, think about the players who've moved on. Waterman, Farsi, Peppel, Intigny. This season, Latori. And, and Latori, they go on and replace them, and there's no panic. It's part of the process. This is a model club in the Canadian Premier League, and you're feeling it affect the effects of it, KJ, across the Canadian soccer landscape. They're yeah, doing what, so much right. Yeah, 100%. A, a real football club, right? Connecting with the community. And, you know, there's a lot of people there, you know, Leon Upgood and Nick Ledgerwood, Tommy Wilden Jr., a lot of people, Tommy's brother, that are doing a lot of different impacts within the community there as well. And that's what football in this Canadian Premier League has to be. You cannot be on an island even in your own market. You have to connect to the youth and the academies and the, the young areas in that area. You want the players to go, the young players to go and watch those players and say, I want to play for that club and maybe go on and play for bigger and better things eventually. But you want those kids to be able to dream and look at those players as being poster child for their own. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass the lead to Calvary FC. Also, we got to commend Tommy Wilden Jr. for, for giving the opportunity to like, guys like Atofi Fankunle and Oliver Minatel who have played for the club yeah. and have gone out to League One and gotten players like Beckford, Kobza, and Tigny have really strengthened that group with guys that can come in and know the identity within the club. But this is just a full unit. And you can see this by how they've played this season and how well they've done. Mason Trafford moving on, still working with the club. Nick Ledgerwood, uh, assistant coach, also assistant with the Canadian women's national team as well. There's real opportunity that's being facilitated and created by this club. This begs the question, and Wilden Jr. made no bones about it. The priority was to win the regular season. He's very much a traditionalist. This is how things work in football. The regular season is typically the biggest championship. Obviously, here in North America, playoffs are a big thing. I still think that these potentially two, maybe three upcoming games for Cavalry, uh, they're massive to like exercise the demons of playoff past and go on and win it as well. But who among the other four teams is capable of beating this Calvary side, KJ. Because right now, Atletico Ottawa, were their bogey club. They've only lost, what is it, three out of their last 18 games? T two of the losses came against Atletico Ottawa. Which one of these teams left standing can go out and beat this Calvary team? Yeah, I mean, this is an amazing scene, by the way, to Very see all the cool. kids on there to go and mix with the players. This is what it's genuinely all about you know it's 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 special you know to see rep to see canadian people and, and canadian kids have this opportunity every credit to that ownership group and the entire people behind the canadian premier league to to allow that i think th those scenes to happen to answer your question it's i would say i would answer it this way i don't think a team can beat them twice and what what, what i mean by that is is that if you go out there and beat them next week uh you know you won't want to play them again do you know what I mean? If, you, if somehow Forge go there next week and beat them, 
uh, you would want Cavalry then to lose the semi-final because I think if you end up playing them twice the way they've been playing, Jordan, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, well, well said, KJ. I mean, there's just so many different ways this Cavalry team can beat you and burn you. Too, diff too many different superstars and guys in form, right? Like, how, how do you prepare for this Cavalry FC side? Who do you nullify? There's different players. You have Akio coming off the bench at, at times. Like, who do you play? How do you go I, about I, it? I will say the one team that's capable is a team that's beat them before, never lost to them in Canadian playoff history. And that's a team that they're playing in the 1-2 yeah. game in well, Forge well, FC. Well, Forge is a different team, KJ. They played five times in playoff football. Forge has won four of them. They drew one game. Yeah. Forge has won four of them, KJ. They have their number. This, well, this is what the storyline is going to be for the week, right? The storyline is the ghosts of the past need to be exercised. The storyline is when it comes to knockout football, and then that's not a knockout game next week, but in those, in those major playoff games, they've never been able to get over them. They've never been able to beat them. And, uh, you know, that's the big story, right? Like, this year, Forge went there recently in their last visit and got, they got battered. They lost 3-0, it could have been more. They got outplayed that day. But Forge will be licking their chops knowing they've got a chance to go there and have a chance. The two original managers left standing doing battle once again next week in the Canadian Premier League. Bobby's Forge, Tommy's Cavalry. It's going to be something special. Let's go to Atco Field. Take this in as the Canadian Premier League Shield, the brand spanking new Canadian Premier League Shield is about to be presented to the first time to Cavalry FC of Calgary, Alberta. Welcome to Atco Field, the Lord Strathcona's horse, Royal Canadians, and with them, the Canadian Premier League Shield. Commissioner of the Canadian Premier League, and I'm not sure if you can hear me, but what a great, what a great day for our sport in Canada. A beautiful venue, one of the most unique soccer venues in the entire world. And what, and what a great day to celebrate the in Canada. And today does not happen without the great city of Calgary, does not happen with the amazing Southern family. Uh, Marg, Linda, Ron, thank you very much for being founders of the Canadian Premier League. It does not happen without Ian Allison and his remarkable staff who put on these events flawlessly. It certainly doesn't happen without the foot shoulders who are screaming for 90 minutes. It doesn't happen without Tommy Wielden Jr. and his incredible staff. And it doesn't happen without great goalkeeping by a CPL and Cavalry original. Marco Cardu It's my pleasure to present the Canadian Premier League Shield to Captain Marco Carducci.
This is what it's all about. Moments like this. The Canadian Premier League regular season champions hail from Calgary, Alberta. It's Cavalry FC. Never mind that sign. That doesn't matter. Incredible scenes in Calgary. Special moments to celebrate for a special group of individuals. Yeah, I got mixed emotions here, Wheels and KJ. I'm, I'm happy for a team who deserves it. I'm absolutely envious, because that, that scene <laughs> of just picking it up, how sexy that shield looks as well, KJ. But that is what you work for, 28 games in a season. It could go to no better team there than Calvi FC. He's been waiting for this. Tommy Wielden Jr. about to go wheels up. <laughs> Taking it every moment. It's so special. I mean, like you said, this is what football's about. Celebrating different honors, the 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 achievement and the 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 the, the emotions there merit how hard it is to win. And that's what I always say in sports, is that's why we love it. That's why we have great players who play it. You know, those of us who are very fortunate to cover it. And I've covered multiple things, the best tournaments in the sport, as you have, because we've done it together for a long time. There's nothing better in my business, in our industry, than covering winners. Uh, because it's the, mo it's the greatest feeling in the world, because you know how hard it is that they have, they, they, it's the, the, their commitment to the cause. We see 28 games in front of us. We see the evidence as, as jurors, but it's the, all the other times. It's the early mornings, it's the sacrifices, it's the, it's the sleep, it's the diet, it's the preparation, it's the foundational pieces that talk about the building of that club, everything from the moment they walked out of Tim Hortons Field last year in one of the greatest CPL games that they were on the wrong end of, the blood, sweat and tears that came from that day to lead to this moment. That's why it feels even sweeter. They deserve every moment of it. They played a huge part in the five years of the Canadian Premier League. They deserve it. And I'm so thrilled that we have a league that celebrates champions because mm. they are champions. And we're going to get another one as well. But this is a, a significant achievement and they deserve every, I, deserve I, every moment of it. I got to hand it to the Canadian Premier League. Presenting the Canadian Premier League shield at this time, after game 28, maybe the timing just aligned, the stars aligned here. But there's a real sense of accomplishment when it's the final game of the regular season. And having the fans and the principals on the field, what great, all the kids running, uh, it, it just looked fantastic. And I just want to say quickly about the last man that we saw lifting up the shield, Tommy Wilden Jr. I mean, he was in a difficult moment at the end of last season. He felt that when push came to shove, just about anything that could go wrong for him and his team did go wrong for him and his team. He's worked hard at this. Even at the beginning of this season, some decisions going against him. It was draw, 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 draw to start the season. You're like, well, what, what's this Cavalry team all about? Now you see how far they've come. Like, he's a day oneer. He's put everything into this club. And now he gets to celebrate again like he did in 2019 and still has one more. Yeah, we can, bring a, we can bring a lot of words up to describe Tommy Willen Jr. But for me, I think one that sticks out foremost in my mind is Brave. I mean, you could go back to what you know. He'd been here for five years, and what he knew was maybe that the Calvary side that we've seen before, that was always good, competitive, but wasn't that upper echelon, wasn't that team to be playing in that last game or win a championship. And what he's done, this hybrid Calvary that we see, dangerous, and he is the man that backed it. And for him to lift it up and take his time with it, that is a scene. I think also, too, when you're looking at Calgary, people are going to ask, where were you on October 7, 2023? Yeah. And that is what I love. As a Canadian who watches, watches this game, who loves it, we can talk about that, and this is the start of that, having the Canadian Premier League shield. He has tremendous traits of, of a great leader. You know, he has humility, uh, which is really important. Uh, he surrounds himself with people that make him smarter, which is absolutely important to have as well. He's a wonderful coach that makes people better, but he's a culture builder. And there's a lot of good coaches in the world who struggle to build cultures. Mm. There's a lot of people who can build co cultures but can't coach. And Tommy Wilden Jr. is both. And he is, he will, you know, he wouldn't like me saying this, but he is. He's Mr. Cavalry. He, you know, he is, you know, the, the ownership group and Ian Alice and everyone else has played a huge part in that. But Tommy Wilden Jr. is the face of the club. And now he's like, the players get there and they get theirs. They, they get all their, their honors and, and, and the way that they lift that trophy. But for him to be the one who's built this from the start, he deserves a tremendous amount of credit. And, and that city is, is, is not only his adopted home, it has become his home. And that's what makes it even more special. Uh, 
a lot of long serving Canadian Premier League players and Canadian soccer players in this Calvary side. Another shout out to Sergio Camargo, day one with Calvary gets to celebrate. And Marco Carducci, who features prominently in our Volkswagen Changemaker moment of the match, which is also your All State save of the match. We love our sponsors. It's a two for one deal because this was so big at the time. It was one nil in this game, still very much up for grabs. It all alone occurred. That is just a sensational save, courtesy of Marco Carducci. Yeah, watch his feet. Watch his angle here. It's not just coming out to try and get anything in it. He actually runs at an angle, understanding that Reed is going at a different angle. So he understands Reed has to hit it with his left foot. So he, instead of running to the ball, he actually runs into the ball at a different angle to meet the angle together. Um, and by the way, they're a difficult team to break down. That was the one glorious chance Pacific had. They had a few of them half chances. It came at 1-0. And two minutes later, the ball's in the back of the net with Bevan. It's 2-0 and it's game over. That's what you call a real game-changing moment of the match. Good old reliable. Uh, we'll get into the other highlights in just a moment. But standing by, Charlie O'Connor-Clark is in Calgary right now, standing by with the aforementioned Marco Carducci. Marco Carducci, you just lifted a trophy. How did that feel? Amazing. Uh, you know, we obviously knew this moment was coming for a couple of weeks now, but uh, I mean, this is incredible to be able to celebrate with the fans, to cap off an amazing performance, and again, just to, to do it with everyone here, it's, uh, it's surreal. You guys have been through a lot in the last five years. How special is this moment in this city, in this stadium? It's, it's everything for us. Uh, as, as one of the originals, someone who's been here since the start, I mean, look what we've built, right? It's been something we've been looking, working towards for five years now. Uh, and to be able to cap it off, get that silverware, uh, and again, just celebrate it with our fans because this is, this is next, like, unbelievable. Uh, and we, ought to, we couldn't do it without, without them, so it feels good to be able to celebrate at home. Forge next weekend. How much do you guys want another moment like this in the playoffs? Uh, honestly, we've been thinking about that as soon as we, we secured first place. I think it was about what's next. So as much as we're enjoying this moment, uh, it obviously means a lot. It's an incredible achievement for the club and for all of us, and again, to be able to celebrate the fans. But now our focus is going to shift really quickly in the playoffs and hopefully be able to go for the double. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Good stuff from Marco. So another big performance from Carducci, you know, captaining this team, being so solid on the back line. But there was another award up for grabs, and it was taken. Well, it's going to be shared as Meyer Bevin scored in the second half. A critical goal puts about 11 on the season that leveled and equaled um, Ollie Bassett of Atletico Ottawa. They're going to share the golden boot, both players on 11 for the season, Jordan. Yeah, 11 goals, it's, a, it's some feat. I think the Canadian Premier League also playing in it but watching it this season. It's tough to score, KJ. It's tough to get 15 goals. These are two players in Ali Bassett and Meyer Bevan that have been consistent. It's the hardest thing to do in football, and I think they both make it look easy. But Meyer Bevan, you could see him when he ran over to his, his teammates, <laughs> right? Like what it means for him to, to get that accolade and to tie it and, and be be a, a golden boot winner, it's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, it's a little deflection there. I'm sure, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure no one's going to take that off him and give him an own goal. So hopefully it stays as <laughs> it would have been on target. It, it might have been safe. I'm with you. I'm, look, every credit to him. It caps off what is almost a perfect season, no, for them. I and mean, he gets an individual award. We've just, at the Canadian Premier League, Tommy Willen Jr. was manager of the month for September. Dan Klump was player of the month. Marco Goodrich was goalkeeper of the month. Dan Kl uh, Maya Bevan becomes golden boot, tied with Ollie Bassett. Five penalties in there as well, but he's been a big player for them where they've struggled with that number nine occasionally. And football's a strange game sometimes, right? You know, Pacific can't buy a goal, and sometimes you just get a goal, by, you know, coming off a deflection and it goes in. Yeah, uh, uh, well done to Meyer. Uh, question, who do you think Charlie's standing by with now? Is Charlie with the Golden Boot winner, Meyer Bevan? Meyer Bevan, you guys lifted the CPL shield. How did that moment feel? Uh, unbelievable, you know, we've worked hard all year for that moment and it felt awesome to do it with all of our fans here today, yeah. You scored a goal today, so you tied for the golden boot. That's got to be pretty fun for you as well. Yeah, I don't know what it comes down to now, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's been a good race between all, all us boys. I think there's four of us going into today, so I mean, yeah, it's been, it's been good. Hope, I'm just happy I can score today, so yeah. What's been different about this team this year? You've been here for two years now. I mean, the boys, we came in from the start in preseason. I mean, everyone, uh, we committed to a plan, I think, and everyone outside of the field gets on really well. I think that's been a big part of this year, so I'm just happy we got the job done today in front of everyone, so yeah. yeah. Thank you, my brother.
He's going to have a big role to play in the upcoming playoff run. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Goals are at a premium, obviously, that time of year. But Bevin, he's been steady and stable in that position all season. In a, in a season where looking for that standout number nine this year, it's been a little bit of a challenge because there's been inconsistent play. I think he's just about as consistent as there's been over the course of this full season. Yeah, I think so. I think he's been a, a top striker. I think he showed up when he's needed to. But um, also just with consistency and the goals, I think he's getting that service, right, where he feels confident. He feels he knows the, the fabric of this team, where to move, how to make the runs, and, they, and they're providing for him. But he's had a great season. It's now can you finish that for the, the next two games? His mobility is very important. He connects really well with Camargo. And, look, he gets his reward and he gets his actual award because of his goals. Um, but he's been a really good player for them up front. The cavalcade of interviews continues. Let's hear from the manager, Tommy Wielden Jr., next. Tommy, you finally got the CPL shield in your hands. That got to feel pretty good, right? Feels heavy. <laughs> but no, I think the weight of the world is off your shoulders when you lift your first silverware. But these are, it's all credit to the guys around us. Look, it's great to win it in front of our fans, but the players have been brilliant this year. Our coach have been brilliant, and our ownership has uh, never stopped believing. Five years, uh, you've been here the whole time. What's been different about this year's team? It's been fun. Uh, it didn't start so well, but... Um, I think that, that made us just lean into how we wanted to play. And you've seen today, we did lose a stride. Every game matters to us. We only play the team that's in front of us. And I think not just us, I think the whole league's got better. I mean, you look at the teams around us. Pacific started the season great. Forge are always there. Halifax have had a go. And for Ottawa, last year's league winners to not be in the mix shows how good this league is. And credit to the commissioner and the uh, ownership groups to say, look, let's celebrate two trophies this year. Forge next weekend in the playoffs. How quickly do you have to shift your focus to that game? I think what we'll do is take today to celebrate. We're going to enjoy the moment today. Um, I think there might be a few hangovers on Sunday, and then we'll get back to work on Monday. All right, thank you very much. It's going to be a big Saturday night in Calgary. Enjoy. I mean, that, that's when you want to celebrate it. it. Thanksgiving, just lie on the couch, <laughs> turkey stuffing and all the good stuff on Sunday. Uh, well done to Tommy Wilden Jr. and Cavalry. They'll be back at it next season to see if they can make it a league double. Uh, winning the North Star Cup, which is going to be up for grabs and which will be unveiled in a few weeks' time at the end of October. Cavalry, certainly the team to beat. They beat Pacific today. 3-0 the final. The pecking order below Cavalry, well, that was settled today as well. Forge lose, but end up finishing second place in the table. Atletico Ottawa finishing this season with a victory. We'll show you the highlights and bring you analysis next. It's Match Day Live presented by CIBC and the mighty Canadian Premier League.